What up students, both junior high and senior high. Welcome to PC Youth Online. Every Friday night at 6 p.m. I will be posting a YouTube link with a lesson, all right, on the social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram for you to click on and tune into. I would love if everybody can tune in together at 6 p.m., but if you absolutely can't, all right, the link is there so that you can tune in later on that evening, maybe during the weekend or uh, later on during the week. But make sure that you tune in, okay? This is the way that youth group is gonna look like for a little bit, this is the way that we're gonna do Church, but the point is that we are still doing church. It's sad that we can't be in the Blair Room. This uh, might be weird for you, but it's just as equally weird for me. Trust me, all right? But on the bright side, listen, for those of you who are constantly on your phone, I won't be able to take your phone and throw it to the ground. For those of you who are constantly talking to your neighbor while I'm talking, I won't be able to interrupt you. And you know what? It's almost like I miss it. It's kind of weird, those things that you take for granted. Anyway, today I would like to um, continue with the theme that's in our world right now and the theme that we've been hitting on uh, at church and that theme of course is fear. Now, you may be sensing a little bit of fear in your life right now, some stress, some anxiety. Uh, maybe those around you are feeling it and sensing it as well. And uh, maybe you're seeing uh, people act a certain way as a result of that fear consuming them, uh, maybe in person or on social media, all right, or through the news. Uh, but I just want to share with you what the Bible says about fear today. But first, before I dive into what we want to talk about today, just for fun, I'd like to share with you some phobias and some superstitions that that are out there that people actually deal with. You might have heard of this before, but some people have superstitions about black cats. There's someone that I was in a car with back when I was a kid in Montreal, and uh, if you know Montreal at all, you know that it has one-way streets, okay? So you can't drive the street uh, down the street both ways, all right? You have to go through and that's it. I was in the car and a black cat crossed the street, and this, indiv this individual driving the car decided to cause uh, a, a traffic melee by backing up all the way out of the street, all right, because he didn't want to go through uh, where the black cat had crossed. Another superstition out there is if you open up an umbrella uh, in the middle of a house or inside of a house somewhere or maybe inside of a building that uh, it will bring uh, a curse to that building or that house or whoever owns it, all right? So you can just imagine me as a kid going into somebody's house and if I found out that that was something they believed in, I'd, <laughs> I'd purposely open up the umbrella in the house just to uh, get a reaction out of the person and see them freak out. Here are some phobias that are really uh, real and out there. And Forgive me if I mispronounce these ahead of time, all right? A lot of these are uh, complicated to pronounce. But uh, so here's the first one Colrophobia. Colrophobia. That is the fear of clowns. I know many of you have that, all right? Uh, Arachibutyrophobia. The fear of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth. If you've never done that to your dog, do it, wait, maybe don't do it, maybe ask your parents if you can do it, but it is hilarious. I, I did it to my dog when I was a kid, okay? Germanophobia, that is legitimately the fear of German people. Geliophobia or jellyophobia, that is the fear of laughter. <laughs> Homilophobia, that is the fear of sermons. That is a real thing, incredible. Nyctophobia, that is the fear of the dark. I think my wife struggles with that a little bit. Chronophobia, that is the fear of the future or uh, the passing of time. Xenophobia, that is the fear of the unknown or the fear of the uncertainty. Atichiphobia or atikiphobia, that is the fear of failure. Achievemophobia, it's like the opposite. It's the fear of success. Audiophobia, that is the fear of abandonment or being left alone or being isolated. Sociophobia, the fear of being judged and rejected by others around you. Now, reading these and, and thinking about other fears in, in, in the world or that people may have or that people may struggle with, okay? Some fears, okay, that people deal with or that are out there are rational, 
all right? They are rational. Other fears are irrational, but they're rational to the person who has them, all right? Um, and right now, we're living in a time where people, and this is a term that I've made up, okay? It's not official, but I feel like some people right now are dealing with corona phobia, all right? It's going around, the world is acting crazy in a lot of ways, people are panicking, and they're letting fear consume them, their mind, and, and it's, it's, it's affecting and uh, their actions, and, and it's, it's crazy, all right? Yes, there are measures that we can put in place to, to be safe, of course we need to do that, to self-isolate, keep a safe distance, and uh, you know, be wise and considerate for other people, but we're not called, I believe, to go in a mad panic and be daily uh, consumed by this fear that is currently going around. Now, let's see what the Bible has to say about fear real quick. If you want to grab your Bible and turn to this scripture with me, please do that. All right, 2 Timothy verses 1, 7, very familiar passage. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control or a sound mind. This passage makes me think of soldiers, all right? When soldiers are going off to war, they're being deployed to go to war. I'm sure part of them are very afraid because they know what's on the line. Their lives are on the line. They know the ultimate price that they may have to pay is, all right? But they are under control. They're under self-control because they're trusting in the power of their training and they're trusting in what they have learned before going out and being deployed. Now, what keeps a soldier alive? Soldiers often say that, yes, their training keeps them alive and what they have learned keeps them alive, but mostly they are driven by love. Love for their nation, and, but more importantly and more personally, the love that they have for their loved ones, their friends and their family members. Now again, if you want to turn your Bible, we're going to dive into uh, the book of Daniel today and we're going to read from Daniel chapter 6 verses 1 to 28. King Darius decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and to protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all of the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. So the king liked Daniel, okay? Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way that Daniel was handling the government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him with. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So one day, they decided our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, we, the administrators, the officials, the high officers, the advisors, and the governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly in force. Give orders so that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed, an official law that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied, that decision stands. It is an official law that cannot be revoked. So then they told the king, that man Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel, again because the king really loved Daniel. He spent the rest of his day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament. 
In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that according to the law, no law that the king signs can be changed. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and could not sleep all night. Very early in the morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lions so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and ordered Daniel to be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had put his trust in God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. Sheesh! The lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should worship the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel went on to reign and prosper. So I believe that fear can do three things. Number one, fear turns people into false prophets or liars, or spreaders of negativity. If you read verse 16, King uh, Darius says to Daniel, may your God whom you serve so faithfully rescue you. It's almost as if he was maybe saying it in a mocking tone or antagonizing Daniel a little bit. People and the world and the devil will try to pump you full of fear all the time. I remember in grade two, um, I would always take this one way to go to school. And every time I would cross this park that I needed to cross uh, to get to school, uh, there was always this, this bully, okay? He was a bully. And I don't know if he was in high school or in junior high. I was only in grade two. So this, this guy was huge to me, okay? And very intimidating. He would always block my way from going to school. Every time I tried to make my way around him, he'd always move over to the left or the right, block me from going around him. He'd look down on me and, and uh, blow his cigarette smoke in my face and, and just say all these mean and scary things. And, but the interesting, is, the interesting thing is that he actually never put a finger on me. He never touched me, he never pushed me, uh, nothing like that ever. But the fear that I had uh, consumed my mind. The fear that I had of this guy consumed my mind. I was always leaving home in the morning thinking, man, am I going to run into this guy? What's he going to do today? Could this be the day where he punches me in the face or pushes me to the ground? I, I don't know. But I was living in fear. And I can just imagine the guards while they were escorting Daniel to the lion's den. M Maybe what they were doing is uh, pumping him full of fear as well, saying, hey, Daniel, those lions, whew, they're going to tear you apart before you even hit the ground. They're going to tear you apart limb by limb, right? They're going to sink their teeth right into you. And, uh, or, even, or even for Daniel, the thought of just being thrown in there, all right, was probably consuming him. He was maybe tripping, all right? I wouldn't want to get thrown into a lion's den knowing that I was going to get mauled and torn apart by a bunch of lions. That's scary, right? The enemy, the devil, probably was pumping Daniel full of fear. I believe that the mind is a battlefield. And I believe that what you allow in and what you allow to consume you will, will, will uh, control your actions and control how you act or behave or even how you speak, all right? So fear can turn people into false prophets. 
liars or spreaders of negativity. Number two, something else that fear does to a person. And this is what I actually love about fear. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. What I love about fear is that it reveals our values, it reveals our loves, our priorities, our longings, and our character. If you read verses four and 10 in that piece of scripture, we see Daniel's character. We see that he was faithful, that he was trustworthy, that he was faultless. And even after the law was set in place to not worship anybody else but the king, Daniel still worshiped his God. Daniel, despite being threatened, he didn't betray the God that he loved. Daniel valued God's ways, God's teachings, God's command. He loved God and God was his number one priority, no matter what anybody said or did. Daniel longed for God each and every single day of his life. Talking about Daniel sort of reminds me of Peter a little bit. Um, Jesus' friend Peter, the disciple Peter. The Peter who chopped the soldier's ear off with a sword, Peter, okay? Um, even Peter allowed fear to cripple him to a point where he denied Jesus three times. So yes, was Daniel afraid? I'm sure he was, but you know what? It did not shake his foundation. So number one, fear turns people into false prophets, liars, or spreaders of negativity. Two. Fear will reveal our values, our loves, our priorities, our longings, and our character and what we believe in. Number three, fear is not always sinful, but it's always an opportunity. If you read verses 19 to 22, the king goes on to see if Daniel was still alive in the morning. He ran over to the den to see if Daniel was still breathing or even in one piece. And Daniel was, all right? He screamed out, man, I am innocent. God rescued me. This gave Daniel an opportunity to testify of God's goodness. This gave Daniel a story to share. Listen, again, there are some fears out there who are legitimate, all right? There are probably parents out there who, when their kid goes off to war, again, as a soldier, there's a legitimate fear that he or she may not come back alive. Maybe your parents have a fear of you getting a driver's license one day. Maybe they, you already went through that with your parents and, and they were paranoid about you having your license or maybe going out by yourself to drive knowing all the risks that are involved. Um, sometimes uh, my mind is consumed. Uh, I'm a little bit fearful of Ellie or any of my daughters going on their first date one day. All right. Um, but listen, not all fears are sinful. You're silly if you don't have any fears. But listen, every fear is an opportunity for you to run from God, okay, away from God or to God as your source of comfort, your source of help and strength and hope. Daniel could have tried everything in his own power to get down there and, and, and fight off the lions by himself in his own strength or, or try to climb out, okay, or yell, help, let me out, let me out. But he didn't. Instead, Daniel's first reaction, Daniel went straight to his father for aid, for comfort, and for rescue. That's the first thing that he did. Daniel chose to run to God in the midst of his fears right away. So listen, I wanna ask you tonight, where are you running to? What are you running to? Or who are you running to as your source of comfort and hope and help? through the midst of your fears? Are you dealing with your fears in a healthy way? Listen, I wanna tell you that it's okay to be afraid sometimes, all right? It's not wrong. I wanna let you in on a secret. Maybe you didn't know this, but Jesus was afraid as well. Jesus went through a period where he was fearful, all right? Jesus, I don't believe, was afraid to die, but maybe he was afraid of the pain and the suffering that he knew he would have to endure. And the reason why I believe that is because in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, it says that Jesus fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Your will be done, God, not mine. See, Jesus was asking God in that moment, man, if there's another way, God, to save humanity, if there's another way, please take this cup from me, but let your will be done, God, in my life. 
not mine, but your will. Jesus, like a soldier, was afraid at one point, but he was driven by love. Love for the world, but more personally, he was driven by his love for you and me. The love that he had for us, the love that he had for humanity. He wasn't afraid of death because he knew where he was going and he knew where he was gonna be. I'm not afraid to die. I know where I'm going when I die because God told me, scripture tells me what happens when I leave this world. Am I afraid of pain and suffering sometimes? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Are there other things in, in my life that I'm afraid of? Absolutely. But I try my absolute best to not let those things consume my mind and control my actions and, and dictate what I do with my life. And I lean in into the promise of God and what God's word says about me, about my life, and about where my source of comfort and hope comes from. I want to ask you, what does your den look like today? What are your fears today? What fears are you grappling with and wrestling with and struggling with? And are they consuming you? Are they dictating everything that you're doing right now? Maybe you're afraid of the future. Maybe you're afraid of the unknown. Maybe you're afraid of failing. Maybe you're afraid of being a disappointment. Maybe you're afraid of rejection. Maybe you're afraid of abandonment. Maybe you're afraid of being out of place because you think you're weird or different from everybody else. Maybe you're afraid of judgment. Maybe you're afraid of not looking a certain way. Maybe you're afraid of being hurt again. Maybe you're afraid of being abused again in whatever way. Or maybe you're in this day of age uh, afraid of coronavirus. Listen, I want to tell you that the Bible calls Jesus our wonderful counselor. All right, He can counsel us through our fear. He can counsel us in our midst of our anxieties and, and stresses. And He can counsel us through any heartache or grief that we may be dealing with or struggling with. All right, Isaiah 41.10. Here's what it says. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is comforting to me. I want to encourage you guys, students, to lean into God's word because it is filled with promises and truths about how God is with you, that he will not forsake you, that he is watching over you, that he is for you, that he's not against you, that he's your protector, that he's your strong tower, your shield, and your very present help in time of need, and that it is better to run in his direction right away instead of running in another direction, trying to find uh, comfort and hope and answers in the world or in another individual who may just be as lost and broken as you. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope that you were encouraged by that today. Don't live in fear, all right? God is for you, and if you remain faithful to God and God's word and his promises, uh, God will be with you and is with you, and he will have your back through your turmoil, uh, through your fears, through this entire thing, and uh, he will always provide a way out. Um, even when the world seems like it's against you, God is for you. Let's pray real quick before I let you go. God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for your word. And God, I thank you for the incredible love that you have for each and every single one of us. Lord, I thank you in the midst of these uh, uncertain times and these times that are always changing and these times that are perhaps filled with fear and anxiety and stress. Lord, I pray that we would run to you and nothing else and no one else for our source of hope and comfort and peace and joy, knowing that, God, you have uh, our lives in your hands, that you were always in control, that you were in control before, that you're in control today, that you're going to be in control tomorrow. Lord, I pray for anybody who's struggling with fear and anxiety who might be finding themselves in some sort of den right now, Lord, I pray that you would meet them where they're at by your Holy Spirit. God, that you would bring them comfort, that you would uplift them. Lord, wrap your arms around them. God, may they see your, your face and hear your voice and, and feel your presence with them right now. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would remember what your word says, God, what your promises are, and Lord, uh, who you are and who you say we are in you. 
And so, Lord, I, I pray for anyone who might even be sick in body right now, that you would heal them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you continue protecting a lot of us uh, through this time of isolation. Protect us from being sick and spreading anything to anybody else. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to tune in next Friday at 6 p.m. and we are going to plow through another lesson and hopefully uh, it can be encouraging to you as this was hopefully encouraging to you tonight. All right. I love you guys. Don't forget to stay tuned in to the weekly video challenges and to participate in them. All right. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon.